Stitching on the machine is done using the inside edge of the presser foot as a guide. Hello humans, I am the master of snake style Ophidian. And I am the nightmare of all mortal men. <laughs> And this is a first ever behind the scenes look at how we make patterns here at Closet Champion. And by we, he means mostly me with his moral support. He does legally own 50% of the process because we're married. Today you're going to get an inside look at my process from turning Kimberly's measurements into a full set of princess battle armor. This isn't the tutorials that you're used to seeing from us on this channel. Today's video is just showing you inside my chaotic <sighs> gremlin process from how I turn numbers into something that we can cut fabric, you know, to like make the thing. That's not it. Excellent, that rubbish. It doesn't even start with I wish. <sighs> this whole process took about an hour and a half, and we sped it up to 10 minutes, and they're kind of giving you just that inside look at, uh, and our voiceovers, our, uh, what's another way to say commentary? that? Commentary. Commentary. Yeah, our commentary over the footage. Uh, enjoy. So I start by taking a version of Kim's measurements, whatever I've been given. This one has no bust and underbust measurements, so I'm going off of her bra size and what is approximately the inch measurement for her bra size. I start by dividing her measurements in half and using that to make a basic sort of hourglass shape because the first thing I'm drafting here is the bodysuit that she wears underneath her warrior armor skirt. Yeah, uh, so we tend to redo the patterns every single time uh, we work with a client. There are a few that we do keep the patterns for for really intricate detail work. Um, you know, things, uh, applique pieces really, more so than the base material. Um, pro wrestlers change in size constantly. You know, we're uh, constantly losing weight or gaining weight or, you know, we're, we have new goals all the time with the way we want our bodies to look. So it's just best practice to really redraft every time. I do my best to make a pattern that is unique to the performer that can will fit basically only them um, accurately, which can become a problem when you work with a company where a character is played by multiple people. But here we are just making this for the princess, so all I have to worry about is her measurements specifically. I start by making sort of a basic bodysuit, and then I begin to transform it with different um, little design details. Like I made a very harsh hourglass shape in the front and back to really accentuate Kim's curves um, and go along with the rest of the lines of the garment. This bodysuit's gonna be covered by the skirt so I don't really have to worry about the bottom half being too intricate. I just drafted a basic panty here and I've been drafting trunks and panties and such for such a long time that some of it's based on math and some of it's based on just how I know patterns are supposed to look. And you'll see later in the process that as I move forward, I start to match the pieces up because I want to be sure that when the pieces are put together, they actually fit. So you see here that I am taking, I'm cutting apart the pattern, matching up where the seams would begin and end based on how I've drafted it and making sure that those are the exact like intersections that I want. If it's supposed to be a straight line, I reshape the curve so that it's a straight line. If it's supposed to meet in a point, I reshape the point so that way the pattern will meet accurately once it's cut. So for those that are unaware, uh, how do the seams accentuate the curves? Like what about the way the placement of your seams uh, that helps um, give it the look that you desire? So though the design on the drawing is not accurate to this, we made the side panels of Kim's uh, bodysuit dark and the middle panel light. By adding the dark colors on the side, it gives her more of an hourglass shape because the front of her is sort of highlighted and I have made essentially a like Black Widow style hourglass with the waist point being the smallest part of the pattern and it getting larger at the hips and bust and you see when it's all put together that it creates a just nice hourglass shape on her body and it helps you know accentuate her feminine wiles as the princess um since you mentioned the colors the being the darks and the um the light pinks uh we didn't have much time to make the set of gear for kim uh this was a rush order that she placed from us. So we had to only use what was in-house, uh, which 
we prefer uh, kind of being forced into the um, we have to use what we've got and we can't you know buy anything for a client because uh, we had about two weeks to make this set of gear um, really allows us to flex our creative muscles it puts us into a box and forces us to be creative um, with what we have the way i like to refer to it is as george lucas making the original star wars movies versus george lucas making the prequels when he made the prequels he could do whatever he wanted and it meant there was just a bunch of stuff everywhere because you can do whatever you want but in the 70s and 80s when he was making the original trilogy he was restricted by technology and what was available and who was available and those things ended up creating a better, more organic film because multiple things had to be changed and adjusted over time. So uh, we just saw you make the uh, curve to the belt. Yes. There. Um, and I drafted it very similarly to how you would draft a corset um, for the sort of Elizabethan and Tudor era, which is where a lot of my pattern drafting experience comes from. I used to work at the Renaissance Fair when I was a teenager, and I started uh, my costuming career working as the assistant costumer at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. So a lot of my experience comes from historical costuming, which is why I love making stuff for the princess, because I get to use more of that um, sort of ideology when I'm drafting. So her belt is made in the style of like a waist cincher or a corset from the Tudor era, meaning it's very conical. Yep. What you said. <laughs> Probably the hardest match I ever had in my whole life. Um, now you see me making the front armor plate, which I made according to how the hourglass of the front panel was shaped, making it sort of a sweetheart bust line to, again, accentu accentuate her curves. And then I didn't really know what I was making as I was drawing it. Yeah, we it. went through, and you'll see as we, uh, as Kate draws the butterfly and as she draws the shield for the belt, or for the waist piece, um, we go through a few iterations during this process. Um, this was definitely uh, a bit of back and forth between the both of us figuring out how we wanted it to look. And ultimately we landed with a butterfly um, because uh, we could really add multiple layers of colors inside the butterfly to really make her shine up in, uh, underneath of the impact lights. Which, you know, if you're not familiar with Princess Kimberly, she works for Impact Wrestling on Access Television. And uh, since it's a professional company, uh, we wanted to put her in uh, put her uh, inside something of fabrics. In, that something that would, really would be dynamic, eye-catching, have a lot of contrast, and um, just being it, giving us space to add more to the textures. I think we've mentioned this before in other videos, but we try to have at least five textures or colors in any design as a way to make it look more real and less like a costume, though this is made in very garish, gaudy, outlandish fabrics. It's for a wrestling princess, and she looks like a fairy Topia Barbie, but a princess, and that's 100% exa exactly what she should look like in, well, in Closet Champion's opinion. Yeah. Um, so the butterfly, for the most part, stayed the same as it was, but as we were drawing the bell, I suggested that it did not look like a butterfly as well. Uh, we in-house do not like it when a superhero type character wears their logo on their shirt, wears their logo on their belt, wears their logo on their gauntlets. It's just, it's unrealistic. Um, it just also doesn't look good. Um, we can put other pieces, other designs on her gear to kind of help accentuate the fact that she is a wrestling princess. So we got rid of the butterfly and we're moving towards something else inside of the put a full-size crown on the belt instead. In this version of the shield, I start with a smaller version of the crown, and then I struggled with what to put underneath it. I sort of started with this like turnbuckle looking silhouette, um, very similar to what Closet Champion has in our logo, but we ended up not going with it because like it didn't, it, the lines were straight and she has all these curvaceous lines on her. It just didn't make any sense. It just didn't look good. Yeah. Um, but uh, once... Once we debated a bit, um, you'll see we added some swoops, some curves. We kind of kept a little bit of that turnbuckle that idea. That rainbow bright yeah. sort of like swoosh, My Little Pony like thing. Like yeah. 70s ch children's t-shirt of a character swoop. And really, even if we draw something up like this, uh, we still tend to change it as we go. There's uh, a ton of our designs that on paper, right in the original draft, it looks one way and then when it's finished, it has a bunch of new elements, it's got new colors, it's even got additional features on it. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if we think something looks good or might look better, we change it. Yeah. You know, uh, Kim gives us a lot of creative freedom with her 
costume pieces, which allows us to make those kind of decisions. And really, that's where we work best, is being able to uh, work on the fly and change as we go um, to really make sure it looks as best as it can. Like I said, it makes a more organic product. Like, we don't want a character to look like they're putting on... We don't want Kim to look like she's putting on a wrestling princess costume. We want Kim to look like she is a wrestling princess. And that's one of the reasons why I think that working in a design format that allows us to change little things over time, it just gives us more time to have conversations about what it should look like and why and give ourselves justification for, oh, well, this would be here, but wouldn't be here. Yeah. This texture would be here. If she needed, if she was a princess that wore this and needed to be in battle, like what elements would make sense here and what elements wouldn't. We do have to try and have some, we try to have some kind of internal logic based on whatever we're designing, whether that logic is the bullet holes going through on some of Soldier Ant's, like, uh, on Soldier Ant's tank top batargo, or a shield being more appropriate with a crown being more appropriate for a wrestling princess than another butterfly. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much the design process here. Um, behind all this, this last bit that you're seeing drawn up are the gauntlets. Which, which I drafted which... earlier, but we realized were the wrong type of gauntlets because yeah. when we make gauntlets for the princess, they're the kind that make her look like a figure skater, obviously. So I ended up redrafting the gauntlet pattern. Yeah. So that was an hour and a half worth of footage cut down to 10 minutes. Uh, that process, what you saw, was only just a small portion of what goes into making a full set of gear. And if this is something you want to see more of, please let us know. So if you liked what you saw today, please let us know in the comments below and hit that notification bell as well as subscribe and like and all the YouTube things that you know how to do because you're of the internet like we are. And if you don't want to talk to us on YouTube, you can find us on social media. Me at Ophidian Cobra. And you can also find me at I am Kate Nix on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to start your journey into the world of making, you can get patterns from us over at closetchampion.com slash merch. And if you have any questions about how to use those patterns, you can talk to us over on patreon.com slash closetchampion by joining our Patreon for as little as $2 a month and getting access to our exclusive Discord where you get to ask us questions about making and music and all the other things we do. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and be on the lookout for more Closet Champion content. Yes. Or the company at Closet Champion on all social media as well. Or our famous cat at Winslow is a cat on Twitter. Well, it is. It's 1 p.m., but it's. <coughs> it's not snack. It's true. This is just the beginning of the process that was making the princess's battle armor for impact. If you like what. Oh man, I never actually plugged it in the beginning. You did not. No. Oh. <laughs> we gotta plug that mess. Sorry. I'm gonna try to chat real quick. <laughs>